Well, if there's one thing that the professional PR marketing campaign through the television, through the computer, through YouTube, through TMZ, through Fox News, through, I mean, just on and on and on and on and on it goes. Every uh, magazine and, and, you know, various forms of media, magazines, etc., have all weighed in to bring the West family to the light and to present another Jesus that people that are fully against Jesus Christ have gone to support and uh, it has been an effective campaign in forcing our collective hearts and minds to discuss what is happening and so I know for a lot of people myself included we were just really silent about it for a long time just kind of ignoring it but it's really being pushed to a level that it's making it difficult to ignore because it demands a response and um, I really like to hear what different people, sometimes you have to hear people say different things, different ways in order to kind of catch what's going on. So I definitely have my own style of explaining how things are working, but I really enjoy hearing the way that a man expresses his thoughts about Kanye. And I've only heard a tiny little bit of this, but I'm very intrigued and I wanted to share this when I came across it and it's, he's very short and to the point and he's a very soft individual, uh, soft as in, you know, gentle, like the Holy spirit approachable. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and let you hear his take on it, because I think it's important that our voices get out there so that as people come to the marketplace of thoughts and ideas, especially when it comes to one of the most important topics on the face of existence, we, as the church, are able to give good, intelligent discussion and warning for what may possibly be happening, in which I'm very confident. But anyhow, I want to hear what this man has to say. And um, you can sub him and all that stuff if it's something that you think you might be interested in. Oh, and I'm also, by the way, really happy to see new subscribers. Welcome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, here we go. Speech. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about Kanye West, and he's been gaining a lot of traction in the public world, in the world period, with his church services. And I, as a disciple of Jesus, I've been able to read the scriptures enough to know that it's actually dangerous what he's doing. So some will say, well, at least he's spreading the gospel in his own way, and the gospel is being heard, and people are being saved. I want to address all of that in this little speech or talk right quick. Um, first of all, I actually don't believe that people are getting saved in the long run, so let me explain. When someone comes to Christ, if they don't have a root or a roots that go deep, there's mm -hmm. a parable in the gospels mm -hmm. that say, some people hear the word and receive it quickly with excitement, but because yeah. they have no root, when the heat comes and when the storms come, that plant just basically gets ripped right out of the soil. And so really nothing happened differently. And then there's another scripture in the, in the uh, New Testament that says it's better off for someone not even to become a Christian than to become a Christian and leave. So... The Judo point Christian. is, is that, and there's numerous scriptures that talk Judo about this, Christian. how you build and how you convert and how you preach the gospel is important. It's not just a matter of, you know, we'll preach it in any way, form or fashion, and that's good. So there is a scripture that Jesus speaks about where he says, you know, I'm, I'm Paul, I'm sorry, says this, he says, you know, uh, well, at least the gospel was spread. And it was talking in context, I believe it was talking about some people that weren't really following, but at least the gospel was was heard by the people that those people were preaching to. And I get that. I also get that Jesus says in another uh, scripture in the gospels where Jesus talks about there will be those that you don't know about and they are also with you as well, which, which sort of implies that there's a group of disciples that will come from different ways. 
and not necessarily the way that you understand. So I understand that that happens too. But overall, the Bible, to me, makes clear that it does matter how you build. And in the long run, the goal of making disciples and, and making Christians and converting people is for them to last for the long haul. Yeah. So the more they understand, the more they really know, and the more that it is the true gospel and not just glitter and yeah. and songs and feel good moments yeah the more you're going to make real and true and strong christians that's that's my belief on the kanye west thing the other thing is it does matter what his life is actually saying you know um the scriptures say clearly that your life and doctrine need to match now no one's life and doctrine match perfectly but it needs to at least be in the process of matching and needs you need to be striving to match and one of the things that i've noticed with kanye throughout his career even from the first album when jesus walks is that that song is extremely powerful but then right in in that same album and every album after that there's been no consistency of message there's been nothing that would make you say okay he's definitely a disciple of jesus because of what he speaks about, but also because of his lifestyle. I mean, you look at his lifestyle and it, it doesn't match what the gospel says, number one. And even if you want to argue for repentance, well, maybe he's repented. Well, then you will start to see those changes be evident in his actual life. And I've yet to see that. He's supporting Trump, which is in and of itself a very um, unbiblical situation, meaning uh, so many issues about Trump as a man of character just says, you know, anyone of of deep faith should really have issues and should be deeply concerned. But then even just the last single, uh, one of the last singles that he put out, uh, she's such an effing, you know, H-O-E, you know, I like it or something like that. So that song alone, you know, the Bible talks clearly about let no, nothing unwholesome come out of your mouth talks about using all this filthy language that that has those two things can't coexist that they're warring against each other and they can't coexist and you claim to be a christian so if you're in a state of repentance then fine but we need to see the fruit and that's another thing that the scriptures talk about there should be fruit from your repentance not just lip service that i'm repenting or you know, don't judge me. That's another thing. The The whole concept of judging has gone off the meters. You know, the Bible makes clear that you are to judge those that are claiming to be Christians. You are to make judgments. And Paul says he makes these judgments. And also, even in the Gospels where it says, do not judge because with the same measure that you judge, you will be judged. Well, that's true. So what that means is don't judge if you're not expecting to live by the same measurement. As Christians, as disciples of Jesus, we are all supposed to be living by the same measurement. That measurement is scripture, the Holy Scriptures. So by nature, yeah, we judge, we make judgments, we are needing to call out whether or not someone is false or whether someone is true. And Revelation, it's clear when Jesus rebukes one of the churches, he rebukes them for not rebuking Jezebel and for not rebuking those that have been against the faith. So Jesus even expects us to be able to hold people accountable. Now, why is that important? It's not me shouting out Kanye. I'm a fan of Kanye's music. I just want to speak as someone who has studied the scriptures a lot. I want to be able to speak my truth just like he does and anyone else does and make sure that at least it's one of the voices that are out there. So it is important because Christianity by nature gets a bad rap the more we don't clarify what is actual Christianity and what isn't. So I compare it to like a doctor. If there's a bunch of false doctors out there yeah. practicing uh, medicine and doing surgeries, that makes the entire the entire field, uh, the medical field, a farce to people. And so it's the same with Christianity. You wouldn't want a false pilot to be flying airplanes and crashing airplanes. And if you allowed that and be like, yeah, just let, let him do him, let him, you know, let people be who they are. Well, no, that's dangerous for everyone who gets on a plane. And it also ruins the aviation um, 
you know, industry where people can't have confidence in it. So you want mm. Christianity to have um, legitimacy and to be authentic. And for people to claim to be Christians, you want to see their life match with the scriptures. So I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not perfect. I am a sinner just like every human being is. But I am striving to live by the scriptures. And I don't mind if someone does exactly what I'm doing here, which is to call out someone respectfully with love, but to call out somebody if you feel that they are not upholding what Jesus actually teaches. Jesus says one thing, and I'll, I'll end it with this. He says, um, let me kill this bug. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus says one thing, um, and I'll end it with this. He says, those who are truly my disciples, the tr uh, it says, follow my word, uh, those that hear my word, follow my word, and last at following my word are truly my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So many people use that passage and just start and stop at the truth will set you free. And Jesus actually says, no. The people that are really my disciples, they will, hold, they will know my teachings. They will hold to those teachings, and then they will know the truth, and the truth will set them free. So that's a quite big difference. And it's important that those differences get shared. Anyway, peace and strength. Uh, for those that are struggling, striving to do the right thing by God, I applaud you, man. We're in this together. Sisters, we're in this together. And I would love to see um, what y'all think about what I just shared. And, um, yo, peace and strength. I thought that was quite good. Um, I would just, the only thing that I would just uh, tweak and say. We call him Yahweh. We call him Jehovah. But sometimes. Would be, um, trying to get back to my right tab here. The, the only thing that I would say, sorry, is that there are pseudo Christians that are not actually truly saved. And it would be better for them to have never even went down the direction of the appearance of godliness. Because if you're, if you're born again, you're born again forever. You're born again. I do want to look over John eight. There's a lot going on in John eight. I mean, there's a lot. Let's just go back it up to the 30th verse. And he spake these words, and many believed on him. And then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit is going to go in you, and he is going to be that saving grace. He's going to be that power that propels you on. He's going to be that, that element of strength within that is God who guides you, who picks you up off the floor when you're, a, you know, <laughs> Lying naked on the floor in a in a pathetic mess, if you've ever been that low in your life, and some people have, and some people are still in that place, and uh, God is our kind, loving, resolute master that comes along and propels us on, and the Holy Spirit does it in such a gentle way. His gentleness is really remarkable. Um, sometimes he doesn't work so quiet in you that you almost don't even realize when he's touched you and manifest change in you, you almost forget about the struggle that you had because you start having the sense of the healing. And then all of a sudden, one day you kind of just realize I'm okay in this area that maybe before you were struggling in. And my kitty. And I, I just notice how powerful he is and so quiet, the Holy Spirit. And he comes along to mediate for us, to, to encourage us, to change us from within. That's the whole process of sanctification. Um, and so he is what will 
cause us to persevere. It's not something where we have to white knuckle it. Not saying that you don't work in your sanctification. You do. But it is a partnership with him. And in he, he, he how do I want to put this? As much as you want to put into it, you can. And as little as you want to put into it, you can. But there, um, we're all making choices, aren't we? We're all making choices as to just how much we want to surrender to him. Just how much we want him to do with our lives. And some people, for whatever reason, we all come from different backgrounds. Different things have shaped us and changed us. 